Forge Setup Find a flat surface to play on. Take Outset Island and Forsaken Fortress tiles and place them far enough apart on the surface. Then, take the remaining tile cards, the ones with the blue backs, and give them a good shuffle. Form a 3x4 grid with the Outset Island and Forsaken Fortress on opposite corners. After you've completed the setup, give players their starting items. Each player starts out with a bomb and an arrow. In your turn, you can move up to two tiles. Whenever you wish to move to a tile, roll the six-sided die and check for the results on the travel table. In this example, the roll result is two, which means that the player came across a shop. They may now pick up an arrow or a bomb. When you travel to an unrevealed island, you may choose to reveal it. If you do so, you cannot move anymore this turn. However, you are still free to interact with the island. There are three types of islands, challenge islands, fairy islands, and dungeon islands. When a challenge island is revealed, take two monster cards, the ones with the orange backs, and put them face down on the challenge island. When a fairy island is revealed, take five fairy tokens and put them on the fairy island. When a dungeon island is revealed, take three monster cards and put them face down on the dungeon island. If you are on an island with monster cards, you can choose to enter combat. If you enter combat and there are no monsters revealed, reveal the top monster from the deck. As soon as you enter a combat, you can choose to leave the combat. However, if you leave a combat, you cannot enter another one this turn. For example, this monster has 4 health, you must roll 5 or higher to deal damage to it, and it has an attack value of 1, which means that if you attack it and your result is lower than 5, you take 1 damage. Keep in mind that monsters have special effects that are written in the monster table. For example, the floor master will end your turn if you try to attack it and fail. Whenever a combat starts, the monsters heal back to full health. Once all the monsters are defeated on a challenge island, you may choose to spend a bomb or an arrow to complete the final puzzle on the challenge island. If you do so, grab a treasure from the treasure deck. Different treasures give you different bonuses that will aid you in this game. However, keep in mind that if you die holding a treasure, you will drop it on the island that you currently are on, and if another player comes and ends their turn on that island, they can choose to pick up that treasure. When you die, all arrows and bombs that you have are discarded. However, when you respawn, you grab one bomb and one arrow. Bombs and arrows in combat can prove very useful. Spend as many arrows as you want before you roll to add that amount to your result. You can also use a bomb to deal 1 damage to a monster. Once you've defeated a monster, roll to see your reward, and refer to the rewards table. Once all the monsters on a dungeon tile are defeated, you can spend 1 arrow and a bomb to receive a piece of the Triforce. If you're standing on a fairy island with fairy tokens on it, you can discard one fairy token from the island to reset to full health. Once all three pieces of the Triforce are collected and brought to the Forsaken Fortress, the game ends. The player who has delivered the most pieces of the Triforce wins. Similar to treasures, if you die while holding a Triforce piece, you drop it on the island that you're on and if another player ends their turn there, they can choose to pick it up. And that's all the information you need to start playing. We hope you enjoy Legend of Zelda Wind Waker the board game.